Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me on this rainy New York City morning as I continue my exploration of the art and science of aging cigars. Today, I have an 11-year-old Arturo Fuente Hemingway classic. This one's actually one I'm a little bit nervous about, and I'll tell you why. Uh, it's about between 10 and 13, 14 years ago that I used to smoke these uh, pretty regularly, probably two a month. Uh, so I was very familiar with them. Always consistent, always reliable. Uh, you know, as my taste changed, I started exploring more Nicaraguan cigars at the time. Kind of just stopped smoking them. But I do have 15 of them left from a box from 2012, uh, making this one 11 years old now. And they they were just sitting there for a long time, untouched. I smoked one last year. Uh, I noticed on my sheet that it was that it hit the 10 year mark. I haven't smoked one in 10 years. So I decided to light one up and it was terrible. Um, it was very surprising because these have always been consistent and never had a bad one. You know, some were better than others. You get some honey sticks that are just absolutely amazing. But for the most part, they were always good, always reliable. Never had a bad experience with one. This 10 year old one that I smoked last year was absolutely terrible. It was bitter, it was acrid. Uh, storage conditions were, were perfect though, so it wasn't that. Uh, it was bad to the point where I, I couldn't even make the halfway point. I had to put it down and, and uh, find another stick to smoke at the time. So um, instead of really addressing the situation, I basically just put them back to rest and ignored it for another year. Here we are a year later, same box, same storage conditions at 11 years old. Um, I'm hoping that one was just a fluke and just a bad stick uh, and it was just a dud, but I'm, I don't know, like I said, I, having smoked dozens and dozens of these, I've never had one like that, so I'm hoping it wasn't the age somehow just completely destroyed it, but let's see what this one smokes like. So I'm going to light this up and we'll check back in with the cold draw and the um, impressions that light up. Optimistic so far. Cold draw was just sweet bread, dried fruit. That light up here, it's already very different than the experience I had last year because that one was bitter and acrid right off the bat. Right now, um, not a whole lot going on, but smoke is smooth. I'm getting lots of cedar, a little bit of leather, a little bit of cream uh, on the palate, and that's about it right now. Retro hail, I'm getting some cinnamon, nutmeg type spices, and leather. So, off to a much better start so far. I will smoke this down a third of the way and check back in. Right about at the end of the first third now. Completely different experience than last year, so I'm very happy that I, I guess that was just the one dud uh, Hemingway that I've had. Um, so, was worrying about nothing. Fantastic smoke so far. Uh, one question for you guys though. Would love to hear in the comments if anyone is able to perfectly light uh, a perfecto shape like this, like the Hemingway, uh, the first time. Of the dozens and dozens I've smoked, I'd say 90% of the time I'd have to light it and then once you get past kind of that nipple point, I have to touch it up because the burn starts to go wavy. But I do see people at the lounge that are able to light it up the first time and it burns perfectly all the way through. So we'll love to hear uh, if you have any special techniques or considerations when you're lighting up these Perfecto type shapes uh, to, to get it right the first time. I not been able to and if you like 10% where it does light up perfectly the first time it's just luck um, but these always burn really well so once I touch it up that first time no issues um, but uh, yeah love to hear if you're able to get that done uh, while you're down there please do like and subscribe if you haven't already so on the palette lots of cream 
good amount of cedar, nice variety of baking spices. Uh, so very pleasant, getting a, not so much the taste, uh, not so much the note, but the, I guess the sensation or the feeling of some citrus zest, uh, quite pleasant. cream cedar spices uh, on the palate and the retro hail, pretty similar. You get a lot more <coughs> of the uh, baking spice notes in the retro hail, but very smooth through the nasal passages, very pleasant retro hail. Smoke quality right now, I'd say creamy, coats the palate, uh, but not quite to the uh, buttery level. Um, Finish is pretty short to medium, but pleasant, light, almost coffee-like after taste on the finish. Um, but very pleasant so far, and we'll uh, continue smoking this down to the end of the middle third and check back then. end of the middle third here smoke quality continues to be phenomenal very creamy now a lot more sweetness a little bit of leather a lot more coffee uh, wasn't really getting the coffee before that really come to the forefront baking spices galore on the palate and retrohale it's like smoking a cappuccino right now so beautiful smoke uh, obviously completely different experience than last year's much better Comparing this to a younger stick, so the big difference is the leather and the spice aren't as distinct. Um, they're better balanced, right? It's a little smoother. Uh, I wouldn't say the edges were rough on a fresher stick, but you definitely noticed the leather and then the spice. Where here, it's the flavors are much more married uh, and, and better balanced. Uh, so I'd say definitely an improvement over a younger Hemingway Classic, uh, but again, this is one of those situations where it's a phenomenal cigar right off the bat when they're young and fresh uh, that mellows, but not in a bad way, kind of just balances out flavors, marry together very well as the cigar ages. Uh, I'm very curious what these would have been like at like, you know, between five and eight years, which is often the sweet spot for, for aging cigars. Uh, unfortunately, didn't think to light one of these up during that period, but say at 11 years, improvement over young. Um, was it worth aging or just uh, smoking these younger? Uh, TBD, and I'll give my final conclusions as I get to the end, but so far not disappointed at all, and I'm very happy with my current experience with this cigar. Now, if you like my content, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, I'll leave the info in the description below. I do have some giveaways, exclusive content, uh, things like that on my Patreon. So any support there would be much appreciated, of course. And I will uh, check back in towards the end of the final third. Now, I forgot to mention earlier, uh, strength and body. Started off solid medium on both strength and body. Right now, I'd say body is still medium. Strength has ratcheted up to a medium plus. Um, it's pretty early in the morning here right now and all I've had was uh, my coffee. So definitely feeling the nicotine a little bit. Um, so I would probably recommend uh, saving these for after at least a moderate sized meal. Um, not getting to the point where I feel uh, nauseous or sick or anything, but I'm definitely getting a little bit of the nicotine jitters right now. But again, check back at the end. At the end here, <clears throat> final third, started off with the baking spices kind of fading away, uh, but towards the latter part of the second third, baking spices came back in full force. Leather and cedars, all about gone, so predominantly creamy coffee. Uh, so the coffee has really come on quite strong uh, as well. So creamy coffee, getting some caramel-like sweetness now, a ton of baking spices on the palate and in the retrohale great cigar um, 
Is it worth laying these down intentionally for 10 years? I would say probably not. I think this is one of those cigars where I'd say, smoke them if you got them. Um, but if you have some that have been sitting around for a while, don't feel obligated to smoke them um, because they start to decline. So like the Oliva V's, I would recommend not letting them go past that seven year mark. These are fine to go past that, but I wouldn't say they improve to the point where it's worth intentionally getting some boxes and, and putting them down for extended aging. So um, that's a, uh, uh, that's, I think cigars like this really fit uh, with the way I smoke. I tend to buy way more cigars uh, than I can smoke to my wife's chagrin sometimes. Uh, so it's nice to be able to leave them there and not worry about them aging out. Um, and, but also uh, seeing that they do continue to improve over age. Um, I do like having also some cigars where I'm intentionally aging, where the flavors really, really improve uh, tremendously with extended aging. Uh, most Cubans fit that uh, mold and the uh, Hoya de Nicaragua and Antonio 1970 for sure fits that mold. The original Camacho Corojo, same thing. Really, really improves drastically with aging. These do improve, um, but again, not to the point where I would intentionally try to age these for an extended time. Just happy that uh, if I don't get around to them, that they'll still continue to uh, improve uh, in small increments. Uh, so there you have it. Again, love to hear in the comments below if you're able to light these perfectos perfectly the first time and any experience that you have with the Hemingways. Another thing I will say about this blend, this whole line, is that the Cameroon wrappers really shine in this. Um, you can really taste the difference between the Hemingways and some of the other Arturo Fuentes that use similar <coughs> tobacco blends. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's actually a pretty similar blend to the Opus X and the Añejo. Biggest difference between those three are the wrappers uh, and smoking the Opus X, the Añejo, and then the Hemingways. You can really uh, taste the character differences behind the wrappers. There you have it. Thanks for watching and enjoy your smokes.